Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Ipsem. I'm a senior consultant at Red Hat. Today, uh, welcome to the Open Source Summit in Japan 2020. Presentation is about how to handle telematic data with OpenShift. What is telematic? Telematic is a simple concept that combine telecommunication and data processing together. Telematic relies on using wireless device that were embedded into your vehicle and transmit the data in a real time to an organization. Example of telematic include personal vehicle with collecting information. So what is the purpose of telematic? Well, we use telematic to increase the operational efficiency so that when, for example, when the truck is going to a different direction, different route, uh, we identify that and so that we could improve digital efficiency and identify the, op the optimal path. We want to improve the customer service so for example, when the customer do not receive the deliverable on time, we want to tell the customer where exactly the truck is and when do they, do, do they expect to receive the deliverable. We want to protect the driver. For example, when there is an accident on the freeway, we want to alert the driver and try to avoid the accident by taking a different route or taking a different time shift. We also want to come with safety compliances. Uh, for example, when certain uh, direction and certain route is not, is not compliance to specific deliver, de deliverable uh, uh, objective, we would use that to do the safety measure. Telematic data includes the wireless communication, location, usually based on the GPS location data and some in-vehicle electronics. It is also used to integrate to the cloud from the automobile. And it is also used for data analysis. For example, when um, we could use machine learning to do different type of predictability, to calculate the sales, event and plan ahead on you know how much data how much truck load how much uh, deliver, deliverable we need to deliver from destination one to destination two an example of telematic data life cycle it contains the first step where the data is generated from the vehicle from the telematic device the data will get transmitted to, to the cloud. The cloud will do the data collection and aggregation, meaning that it will convert the external data object into internal object, and you could aggregate the data together based on clustering, based on data similarity. And after that, the data will be analyzed and sometimes it could be used by um, machine learning or it could be done by manual analysis to analyze the behavior of the data. And at the end, we would go into some sort of e evaluation. For example, the driver's performance, the truck's performance, are we delivering as an organization? And then you can see the cycle get repeated again and it will go back into our second iteration. Commercial telematic contains onboard tracking systems that send GPS location, wireless communication, truck data, and also it contains jurisdiction and tax management. The driver would have some interfaces. The interface could support the voice communication to talk to a dispatcher, and it also support the text message communication. The onboard sensor is embedded into the truck, monitoring the truck load, the capacity, the temperature of the container and the tire, 
and the weight of the vehicle. All these different real-time information we will send to the cloud. This is an example of a telematic uh, system in integrated into a container truck. At the end of the truck, you see that there is a, a door sensor that will keep track of how many times the door of the container has been opened, how long it takes for the operator to load the, the, the goods from the truck and out of the truck. The door locks is also a monitor so that we could track how many times the, the lock has been engaged. Is the lock secure? Is it protecting the item? At the bottom of the truck, you see there were a um, monitor for the tire, including the tire pressure, the, um, the temperature of the tire, the, uh, the, the rotation of the tire, how many times has it been uh, uh, rotating, right, the RPM and all that. The truck ID is also a uh, monitor integrated as part of the truck. Uh, other temperature sensor um, and also the weight sensor were also integrated. So this is a complex system. You see there was a lot of data we could use from all these different types of sensors. Similarly, in the passenger vehicle, you can see that when we are driving, we have the emergency call. The call could keep track of how many times we are calling for emergency for roadside assistance, um, navigation GPS system, tracking our driving behaviors, device-to-device -device communication. So for instance, when there are accident happening ahead, the device could communicate to other devices embedded into the vehicle to send out alert and notification. Remote vehicle access, so it will allow you or other people who are allowed to access the vehicle, access to the vehicle. Vehicle tracking and information, tracking the owner, Right, the vehicle of the vehicle, the wireless phone integration, tracking your phone activity, tracking your phone number, right, um, radio system, and other user preferences. This is a picture of a telematic control unit. The control unit contains different integration points with different ports. Each port will get some information from other integrated system. So you can see the microcontroller in the middle can take the information about the battery, about the memory, about the uh, GPS, about the you know car internal system, and all that information will get consolidated through the telemetry controller unit. And then the purpose of this unit, as you can see, is to create and collect vehicle data from the ports. It manages the information uh, from the communication interface. It manages memory and battery. It manages the communication to the cloud and also manages the communication to the dashboard in the device. This is usually embedded into your edge devices. We will talk about the meaning of edge devices in the following slides. An example of telematic data category, you have the vehicle system category. So this data will focus on the engine, the transmission, the OBD, the, the weight, right, the lights and the tire of the vehicle. And now on the right hand side, you have the category for the driver that usually keep track of the driver's identity, the driver's driving behaviors, the uh, hour of services, right, the speed, the acceleration, the idling time of the driver. And then in the bottom, you have the operation categories. This is usually used by the uh, organization to plan and, and optimize the operation to usually reduce operational cost, and increase performance and efficiency. This include tracking the location and navigation, the dispatcher schedule, the roadside assistant, and then the delivery time. 
now we have a basic understanding on the telematic data. So let's look at how OpenShift could help with the telematic data. OpenShift is a distribution of Kubernetes. It's optimized for continuous application development, multi-tenant developments. OpenShift contains developers and operator-centric tools on top of Kubernetes. And it enables rapid application and development, easy deployment, scaling, and lifecycle management. An architecture of OpenShift will contain full stack end-to-end -end automation. So on the top, you can see it manages the, um, the Git repository, the infrastructure, to databases, to release cycle, and to deployment. So all these were managed by OpenShift using the OpenShift Web Console. In the bottom, you can, you can see that OpenShift support the multi-cloud platform, the hybrid cloud platform, and edge computing. We will talk about edge computing in more detail in the following slides. First, when, before we move to OpenShift, we need to make changes to the telematic system to make it as a cloud-native application. Usually, cloud-native application come from the concept of DevOps, continuous delivery, microservices, and container. Regarding the OpenShift Cloud Native app, the benefit is that the app is scalable, is self-healed based on health check and monitoring, support DevOps approach, is continuous delivery, and it decomposes microservices with API. And this is also leveraging the container architecture. DevOps process usually involves continuous integration, continuous testing, continuous delivery, and continuous monitoring. As soon as you check in your code into Git, the code will get deployed to, to the cloud, and using the health check and monitoring, we can continuously looking at the container and making sure that the, the container is up and running. The, um, as soon as the code is checked in, um, as long as all the integration tests and unit tests are passing, it will integrate it into production, and that becomes the next release. The Jenkins CI-CD pipeline will take, get the latest code from the Git repository, um, Dockerize the microservices with the Docker registry and images. Uh, hook up the unit test, integration test, and automation test to the Jenkins CI CD pipeline. With the Jenkins gated check in, you can reject, for example, any code change that failed the test or that did not meet a specific code coverage number. The build artifact will get uh, pushed to the artifactory such as JFOG. The Jenkins pipeline also supports uh, statical analysis, security scanning, so that it can catch for any security vulnerability as part of the code change. Uh, Jenkins also supports deploying to different OpenShift environments. And then after the deployment, it will do the health check and smoke test to validate the deployment is successful. The migration to microservices is the idea to break down telematic services into microservices by function. The microservices needs to contain logical blocks of function. Each service is self-contained, self-deployed, and they work independently. So each service, you can think about it as a quad operation. And for example, we may have a location service that deal with the location data endpoint, right? So it's, it's a self standalone small microservice. When there's a high peak going into this specific surface, um, it will automatically scale up by OpenShift. And it would also scale your databases based on usage. Other benefit coming with OpenShift is the operational readiness. 
we talk about health check. Health check have the liveness probe and readiness probe health check. It would be able to ping the surface endpoint and verify the dependent services are running. Other interns such as the Victor Ops integration allow error and alert notification to send out to engineers when there's a production issue. It also provides integration with Slack and email so that the engineer will get notified when there's a production issue. Prometheus is also integrated with OpenShift. It allows us to track the API calls, the request, the response time, the error rate, so that when there's a performance issue, we can use Prometheus to identify <clears throat> the problem. And for example, if a specific error or message is happening too many times, Prometheus will be able to flag the alert and send out a notification. OpenShift also has Splunk inter integration. All the warning and error logs will get sent to Splunk so that you can query and look at, the, at this log in details. And Jaeger Tracing, for example, <clears throat> is another integration with OpenShift. It allows us to group services together using a common request ID so that we can track the surface orchestration, the surface call workflow, and use that for debugging and troubleshooting. So now you understand health check and monitoring are all tied to our container. And we could also use metrics, locking and tracing to get it from the container. So now let's introduce an idea called IFTA, I-F-T-A. IFTA stands for International Field Tax Agreement. So each state has their own IFTA. And then basically the idea is that <clears throat> when you are driving your truck, going through different states, you need to pay tax, right? And then the tax is a lot of time based on the mileage or based on how much time uh, you have spent in each state. And this calculation is super complicated because, because each state has its own IFTA law. So this is an example uh, microservice architecture where you can see we are using the telematic surface, generate the telematic events and feed the data back to IFTA so that IFTA can use that information to calculate the tax for, for, for the payment for the state. And then at the same time, you have you know, vehicle service that keep track of other vehicles, and they all feed into different um, uh, databases in the, in the bottom. And then um, on top of the database, there was a, a layer, uh, a surface layer that get the data from the database and feed that information back to the UI and the gateway. So the IFTA calculation is complicated. For example, if you are driving from uh, Trinidad, Colorado to uh, Stratford in Texas, right, the, you could easily go through uh, four different states based on your GPS calculation. But this calculation is changing at real time. So for example, if there's an accident, on the freeway, or if there's a construction in the freeway, the uh, route from the GPS could change. So any change will result in different IFTA calculation. You may end up not going to a specific state, or you can end up, you know, um, going into more different state. So this calculation is dynamic, and it relies heavily on the real-time telematic data. So for IFTA calculation, we need the real-time data from the telematic surface to perform the actual calculation, right? Any change in the GPS calculation could result in different mileage and time span in different jurisdictions. Um, a lot of time operation um, could be focused on how to uh, optimize the operational cost by going through the state with the lowest tax and lowest fuel tax. In this situation, the edge computing could help. So 
Now we understand the big picture of OpenShift. So how does edge computing come into OpenShift? Edge computing is the idea to place the workload as close to the device where the data were created and the action was taken as possible. So the idea is if you put your calculation and computational power and resources closest to your device, you would get a much faster response from the calculation so that you can take action a, a little bit faster. The telematic data gathered from the device will, may, will be made available to the cloud. So how does that work? We leverage the 5G network to open up the computer. Computing capacity into, into the devices. This is a picture of edge computing using 5G network. And the, in the bottom of the page, you see there are different edge devices that were embedded into the truck and different trucks were driving. As soon as there is a 5G network available, the data will get transmitted to the edge node. Edge node is a layer, is a sub-layer on the cloud that's specifically uh, configured to interface with the edge devices so that you would do, do the uh, computation um, at the lowest level and as fast as possible, right? And then it, the edge node also integrate with the, other, the rest of the cloud system by submitting the data to the cloud the cloud will do the data backup and do further data analysis and, and generate the you know, user dashboard and interfaces for the operator at the organization to look at the data. So this is a high level architecture, right? Sometimes you have more than one tiers of edge nodes and we will talk about the benefit of doing that in the following slides. In the edge node, this is just a piece of IT equipment built for IT workload computation. It could be a four blade server, right? Usually it means to be lightweight, right? You have a small server as with you know, limited or, or some small computational power and you want to do the calculation fast and lightweight. In terms of the edge devices, you would have a piece of IT equipment built for gathering different telematic data in your vehicle, including the sensors, the GPS navigation, the radio, camera, internal car system, and its CPU. So on average, we have about 20 to 30 different CPU in a car. So you see there was a lot, a lot of you know, computational resources we could take advantage from within the vehicle. And for the edge devices, the computational capacity has increased significantly in the last decade. Many of them were running in Linux. That means we, can, we could deploy containerized workload into the edge devices as long as the edge device support Linux. So now the next question would be, how do we manage these different environments and ensure that the right workload will deploy to the edge devices and the edge node at specific time. The answer would be using OpenShift. OpenShift build the workloads as containers. Containers are deployed for scaling and availability. Uh, it en enable the Kubernetes to run on the cloud and then we basically use the same concept to manage and deploy workloads into the edge devices. Some technical problem that we have seen, the number of edge devices are very high. It's estimated altogether 50 to 100 billions of edge devices in the fields, right? These devices are coming into many different forms and configuration. Security is also a concern because the edge devices are outside of the boundary of your data center. Therefore, the data associated with the edge devices need to be protected. And it is not possible to do any manual deployment or configuration. 
on the edge devices because there's just so many. So we need to, a way to distribute the workload to billions of edge devices in a massive scale. So how do we use edge deployment with OpenShift? OpenShift ensure the uniformity, consistency, security, and reliability across the edge node and edge devices. OpenShift define and provision standardization in edge node and edge devices. We could deploy the appropriate application resources based on their purpose. So for example, the GPS has a specific purpose of gathering and tracking the location. So we would only deploy workload that were related to locations to the GPU, to, to the GPS device. When we deploy new edge location, OpenShift would ensure that the new appointment are standardized, compliant and secure, so that it would keep the cluster to, to, to be uniform across all business footprint. So uniformity is really the key, right? You want to make sure that the same containerized application could be deployed to all these different platform using a containerized architecture. So earlier we had the diagram about the edge deployment. So, so there are actually more than two layers, right? Sometimes in this situation you have five or six different layers of edge tiers for deployments. So on the far left, you have the device layer, right? This is where you deploy the um, container application to devices. It used to, you know, think about this device layer is really uh, limited computational power, you know, with Sometimes you don't have any availability, uh, HA set up, right? you have one instance that will deploy to this edge device. So on top of the edge device, you have the edge node layer where you could have some simple um, infrastructure configuration. You could set up uh, high availability, scalability, geo redundancy on that layer. At the provider layer, this is the layer where you would you would uh, communicate be between the edge, no edge device and your data center, right? It have different provider layer set up. For example, the provider layer for the far edge, um, the prov provider layer for access edge. So for example, you have different type, different tiers of the data. You want them to have different accessibility. So this would be the way, the, 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 the level, the layer that you set up the access edge and at the end you have the provider aggregation edge right you aggregate these different different data together into a, an aggregation layer so that you could do a, a layer surface orchestration and then in the core circle in the middle you have the provider enterprise the data center right your data center could be a regional data center or could be on the cloud right so this layer is also deploy using OpenShift. So, uh, so taking, looking at this picture, you can see that as we are moving from the edge cluster layer to the right to the device layer, this configuration would change significantly. At the edge layer, if it come with, if you deploy with OpenShift 4.5, it automatically go with three master node and three worker nodes. These are set up for high availability. And if one of the worker is down, you, the other worker will step up and continue to support the workload. As you move to the right, you see the remote worker node uh, will, configure, will be configured a little bit differently. You have one worker with three master. And then as you go further to the right, you have a single node. Single node, single edge node server is basically one worker and one master. And then on the device, you, you basically don't have any, uh, any more replication. You only have one single container deployed into the device because of the limitation of the, of the computational resources. 
And as you go from the left to the right, you can see this is also depend on the network connection. The edge cluster with three nodes have more reliable network, right? And then as you go all the way to the to the right, the edge device, which basically depends on the 5G network, has really weak connection. So the idea is that if the connection is not available, it the, the, the workload won't won't be won't be able to pass on to the left. So so some retry logic needs to be happen so that you can cache the data locally on the edge device. And as soon as the 5G network is available, it will push the data up to the next level. So we have an example um, project where it take the, the highway, the road condition, and send out alert based on telematic data. The truck camera will keep track and capture the road condition as an image stream, as a video stream. Video stream is a collection of images. Each image is tagged with uh, the location let long and the time frame. When the image was saved uh, and gets submitted to the edge node, we have some machine learning program to run and flag the images with, with hazardous condition on the edge node. So for the images that were flagged, we will trigger the alert and notification based on the image location and based on the image timestamp and send the alert back to the edge devices which are within the, the, the location and the timestamp. So once these different edge devices get the notification, it will trigger the GPS to recalculate at the route so that you can take a different route to avoid the accident. And then similarly, the machine learning layer will also communicate to the cloud layer and talk to OpenShift. When OpenShift got notified about, about the, uh, the images that were flagged for accident, it will update and notify the operator. The telematics dashboard will also get updated so that the operator can go in and manually configure the uh, driver to take a different schedule or, or go to a different destination, right? Basically, the um, alert will allow the operator to optimize the, um, the activities, right? And minimize the operational cost for the day. The telematic image with OpenShift is based on the telematic image from the edge devices. And as you see, the world condition will get analyzed at the edge node and alert will get triggered to notify other devices. So um, the edge computing solved the computational resources and latency. The image were able to transmit through 5G network. When the network is not available, uh, retry will happen. If after a couple retries and it's still not available, the edge device will cache the image and wait for the next availability of the 5G network. The telematic image will be back up in OpenShift when it receives the data from the edge node. So from the dashboard, you can see this is an example where um, it would update the accident uh, indicator based on the image, based on the uh, location let long, and then the timestamp. So from the operator point of view, uh, the operator can come in and look, look at all these different incidents from the dashboard, and then try to plan ahead for the day. So um, as you see, the, our application is using a uh, containerized application. Um, OpenShift supports uh, GPU, graphical processing unit. So the latency of the image data going from the edge device to the edge node is less than 200 milliseconds. 
The latency for the machine learning for scanning each image is less than 300 milliseconds. And we have a bandwidth of, a, of about 5 megabytes per second per upload of the telematic image. This is a layer of uh, machine learning uh, configuration that we use. Um, this is basically an artificial neural network. Each image coming in, we will do some image uh, feature extraction. And based on the feature, we can predict the true or false whether the image is an accident or not. And these are some of the factors that you could consider when you are doing the image extraction, right? You could look for the accident cone, you can look for specific accident sign, right? Look for police car, ambulance, right? And so on. So each image has a score between one and zero. One means the image, uh, uh, signify a prediction of a potential accident. The alert will get triggered based on the image location. A, a score of zero would signify the image does not associate with an accident. The cutoff value we set off is 70%, right? If it's lower than 70%, it's not an accident. And based on the model, we can see that the prediction could reach 97% accuracy. So the last piece we want to go cover is the real-time telematic. We want to execute jobs within minute or within a mile when the real-time data come in into the telematic system. So how do we do that? The idea is that we could use change data capture on the application side. This is a design pattern for event-driven cloud-native application with OpenShift. Change data capture continuously identify the incremental data change. The real-time data replication across databases and replica were done through the transaction logs. We trigger events based on data change. We capture the, and propagate the data to and the events to the microservice within the system. Based on the uh, change data capture is based on the upstream uh, the BCM project, and it integrates really well with Spring Boot and OpenShift. So the purpose of using CDC is to increase the as we increase the data collection, querying the entire database become really expensive as your data size is growing, um, and you know backing up database and you know do a full scan on a database is also expensive. CDC would make the real-time data replication possible. The idea is that we have the telematic database on the left. You have different uh, query coming in to do the insert, update, and delete. And when this query finish, we have the transaction logs. These logs will be uh, standing waiting at the event bus. We push it to the CDC relay, which is a DBCM. And then uh, the PCM will notify the Elasticsearch engine on the right-hand side, which contains the telematic index. So once this data is updated, it will trigger the notification to, to the uh, dependent services, and it will update the telematic dashboard, the um, operator um, dashboard, right, and email notification and all that. So you can see um, this is a really effective um, architecture because now everything when there, every time when there's a new change coming in, and if the changes are insert, update, and delete, then we will do some action based on the types, based on the query type. To um, integrate the uh, DBCM into Spring Boot, all you need is to open the dependency uh, pom.yaml file. And update the um, and add the DBCM uh, dependency. The CDC listener is basically is a Java program that is set up to um, to uh, take the constructor to load the configuration and set a callback on the handle event method. The handle event method is then uh, get invoked when a transaction is performed. The embedded 
engine is a wrapper of the connector that the manage the connector life cycle. So this is an example of a CDC listener that will perform on the telematic connector and the telematic surface, and it will notify the handle events when the transaction happens. So the start method is called when the DPCM engine is initialized and is started asynchronously using the executor. The end method will be called when the container is destroyed. This will stop the DPCM and merging the executor. Handle event will be called when the transaction is performed on the telematics table. And handle event method will identify what operation takes place and call the corresponding telematic service to perform the create, update, and delete on the elastic search. And this is an example of the start and stop method on the CDC listener. And the telematic connector will listen to the change from the telematic table using the Postgres connector class from the DPCM. It will have the offset storage to keep track of how much data has been processed from the transaction mark. It can resume from the failure point when an error has occurred. Usually this type of error means uh, there's a connection error. Um, the database you know, went offline. When it go online again, it will be able to resume. Um, the file offset backing store to, it is used to store the offset in the local file so that you can have a cache copy of that offset. The connector we caught the offset in the file or for the new change and then the DBCM engine flushed the offset based on the flushing interval. And this is a DBCM connector configuration based on um, the name of the connector, the flush interval, database name, port number, username and password. And the dynamic surface maintain the read model method, handle the update, insert, and delete on the telematic data. The telematic repository is an interface to perform the, perform the quad operation on the telematic database. Right, so this is a telematic surface that, and as you see, you know, if the operation is delete, then you will call the tel telematic repository and delete the transaction, the telematic, based on the telematic ID. And if it's not delete, then you will save the telematic object. So at the end, today we have gone through a lot in this uh, presentation. You learn about OpenShift, you learn about edge computing, you learn about telematic data, you learn about CDC. And you can see that the telematic data integration with edge computing on CDC work really well with OpenShift and it enable uh, easy, highly distributed, event-driven, transactional log-driven, stateful micro microservices development. Uh, the edge computing with 5G network offer fast and reliable solution. The event stream created on, is based on the log change. The application could listen to the event and perform action based on data change. Right? That, that makes it super useful we need to deal with real-time data. It also perform consistent uh, data manipulation using edge computing. The data will be processed at the uh, edge layer before it will go to uh, the OpenShift layer. Um, you can see the distributed uh, connector cluster also provide high, high availability, scalability, and improve the performance of the overall system. With uh, edge computing and OpenShift and uh, CDC, the architecture is open source, is um, supported by the open source community, and we support any uh, programming languages and development framework. This is really useful. So for the next slide, um, thank you again for attending this conference. We enjoy talking with you. If you have any other further question, please reach out to Red Hat Consulting. Um, we would be more than happy to assist you in any uh, architecture related to OpenShift and edge computing. Thank you again. I hope you have a great day at the summit 